Jesus, we open our hearts to you. We know that so often in so many ways and so many times we've just sung songs about you and we've, we've gone through the motions and we've sung verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, bridge, bridge. <laughs> but um, Jesus, we can't worship you without your help. We can sing pretty songs and do the Christian things, but right now we're here to open our hearts to receive something from heaven that's worthy of going back to the Father. So we open our hearts to receive from you right now, Jesus. And let us, let us have the strength to wait on you, to wait for you, to wait on you, and to wait for you, Jesus. So that we, we only release that we release what you're giving us. We choose to wait on you, Jesus. We choose to wait on the Lord. We need you to do something in us that's worthy to go back to the Father. Jesus, do something in us that's worthy of, it's worthy of heaven's ears. God, do something. Lord, we, we choose not to just fill the space with songs of the spaces that, the spaces that happen where you want to minister to us, where we're supposed to be silent. Those, those spaces, the holy hushes, God, make it strong in us. Make it strong in us so that we're able to wait, so that we're able to wait on you and listen with the ears of our hearts. I need you, I need you. Oh, how I need you.
I can feel the Lord asking for our worship, but not in a way where we're sitting in this room worshiping Him, but giving over our worship, like our ideas of what worship is, like the, the way we hold on to worship, the way we sing into the mic. Like His heart is like, He wants us to worship Him, but even that, He wants more of that. He wants it to be His. It's like, it's not our worship to hold on to. These mics aren't ours to hold on to. These songs, this ministry, this, you guys be, it's not ours to hold on to and to make claims of. It's to steward what's his. This is a safe place. Maybe some of you have always just felt like you had to be hidden in your worship or like you couldn't worship God freely. Maybe you just felt like embarrassed or or like you just felt like everybody was gonna look at you or, um, but I just hear the Lord saying that this is a safe place and you have permission to worship Him like the way that you do in your room or the way that you do in your prayer closet. You have permission to do that here. So worship the Lord freely. This is a safe space and we are here to worship God in spirit and in truth. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So worship Him freely. Amen.
sing this just uh, Jesus, see with the Jesus, eyes of your spirit. Jesus, see with the eyes of your spirit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. All the angels cry. listen listen with your spirit and sing with your spirit all the angels cry
are my hiding place. You are my safety, God, my shield and my strength, Lord. My rock, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. from addiction, we're free from shame, we're free from guilt, in you we find safety God, in you we find comfort God, in you we find peace, thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus we love you. aware of what you're doing in the room, God. God, we need you. We know that you're here, Lord. We know that you're here, God. 
We welcome a fresh touch from our dad. Yes. A new touch, a new affection, a new way to love us. God, we want to receive your love if you want to give it, but sometimes we don't know how. There's so many perverted portions of my soul that don't know how to receive affection because it's been so damaged. There's so much perversion in the soulless realm of my life that needs your love and affection, God, but I don't know how to cry out for it because I'm afraid that you're going to treat me like every lesser lover has, God. There's that portion of my soul that feels like you're going to retract from me or step aside from me or look at me like somebody else has God. And I'm just being honest, I'm sure there's a few people in this room that feel the same way, that we don't know how to receive perfect love because the only love we've ever received has been way less than perfect. God, would you come in this room and baptize us with your love, Father? Would you touch the portions of our soul that need you, God? Would you touch the portions of our soul that need renewing, God? Would you come in and touch us tonight, God, right here? Would you touch us? We need our Father. We need our Father. We need the blood of Jesus to wash over the portions of us that haven't received love. Jesus. Lord, I just pray right now for healthy affection to be poured out yes. from the throne room. I pray for healthy affection to pour right out of heaven on the people in this room, God, on the portions of their souls that have been perverted by lesser loves, God. We need you, God. We need you to touch those portions. I've been crying out all day for this. I need healing.
save you, God. And no good deeds, no filthy rocks for the king. my efforts in the flesh you're not pleased with the things I try to do in my own strength to earn entrance into the holy place it's a filthy rag for you Jesus give us give us give us give us rest. your blood speaks rest, a better word rest rest, rest. Oh, yeah. your blood speaks a better word Forgive us, forgive us for, for trying to do good things and be good in order to earn you doing stuff for us. Forgive us for trying to do good things. Forgive us for standing on our merit and our efforts and our strength and our ministry and our 501c3 and our Bible college certificate. that you have given us. Magnify it, multiply it. Let us pour it out on you, God. More and more and more love on you. Appreciation on you. We love you, Jesus. And we love you more and more and more as you reveal yourself to us. We love you more and more. There's no one like you, Lord. And there is no darkness in your presence. There's no fear, no condemnation, no insecurity in your presence, Lord, and you are here with us, we are with you, and we are one, just like you prayed for us, Jesus, to be one with you, we are one with you, Father, and we love you, we have no fear, we have no doubt, we have no shame and no condemnation, 
The blood is a perfect, perfect language. And I let the blood speak for me. I am whole and I am healed. And as you see Jesus, you see me. I am yours and you are mine. You are my beloved. You are my beloved and I am yours and you are mine. There is no condemnation now. The past is gone and it can take everything ugly of ourselves with it. I am dead to the self. I'm dead to the old man. And today is my new day of life. And I worship you for today. I worship you for right now. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. We love you. Amen, amen. And like I said earlier, this is a safe space. So you're gonna see, if you've never been here before, you're gonna see people worshiping in many different ways and it's beautiful. And we just wanna invite you, worship Him in spirit and truth. It doesn't have to look like your neighbors, but worship Him here. This is our, this is our time together to worship Him. So just be encouraged tonight that this is a safe space. So if you want to shout, if you want to jump, if you want to whatever, just worship Him because it's all about Him. Amen. There's no guilt or shame in this kingdom. Yes. There is no guilt or shame in His kingdom. He doesn't 
doesn't turn anyone away. doesn't leave people out there's room in this kingdom there's room at my table with my dad there's room at the table of God there's room in the throne room there's room at his feet there's room in his lap there's room in his arms there's room in his chest to the abused and the abuser that you poured out forgiveness for. Thank you, Lord, that I might be sitting at a table of someone who got delivered of pedophilia, but that's how beautiful your blood is. It's how offensive your blood is. Thank you that I'll sit next to the woman caught in adultery, God, when I get to heaven. Thank you for your kingdom. You see so differently. You see the rape victim and the assaulter. That's what your blood says, not me. I'm sorry if it offends you. Close your Bible and read another book. That's the blood of my Jesus. That's the blood of my Jesus. That's the blood of my Jesus where the victim and the abuser might be at the same table 
other, hugging each other's neck, sharing a meal together. repent the gospel is so beautiful and offensive God, Lord Jesus thank you it doesn't make any sense sometimes if you think about it for too long it's like trying to think about infinity and your mind just goes let's move on to something else but I promise this too good to be true news is true
walked up the Mount of Olives near the city where he spent the night. Then at dawn, Jesus appeared in the temple courts again, and soon all the people gathered around to listen to his words. So he sat down and taught them. Then in the middle of this teaching, the religious scholars and the Pharisees broke through the crowd and brought a woman who had been caught in the act of committing adultery and made her stand in the middle of everyone. Then they said to Jesus, Teacher, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Doesn't Moses' law command us to stone to death a woman like this? Tell us, what do you say we should do with her? They were only testing Jesus because they hoped to trap him with his own words and accuse him of breaking the laws of Moses. But Jesus didn't answer them. Instead, he simply bent down and wrote in the dust with his finger. Angry, they kept insisting that he answer their questions. So Jesus stood up and looked at them and said, let's have the man who has never had a sinful desire throw the first stone at her. And he bent over again and wrote some more words in the dust. Upon hearing that, her accusers slowly left the crowd one at a time, beginning with the oldest to the youngest, with a, with a convicted conscience, until finally Jesus was left alone with the woman, still standing there in front of him. So he stood back up and he said to her, Dear woman, where are your accusers? Is there no one here to condemn you? Looking around, she replied, I see no one, Lord. Jesus said, then I certainly don't condemn you either. people 
are the ones that hurt other people. Accused people are the ones that allow the accuser to accuse through them. So Lord, give us grace for those who accuse us. True grace for those who accuse us, Father. We forgive every accuser in our lives, every human being. We forgive the human being. We forgive every person who the accuser has used to hurt us, to speak into our identity wrongly, to cut off the trees, to cut off the branches, to cut off the precious branches of the trees that were just about ready to produce fruit. Oh God, protect our tree, protect our tree. You are the husbandman who trims the tree and prunes the branches, Jesus. We trust you. Instead of defending ourselves and allowing our branches to be cut by the accuser, we trust the gentle hands of the gardener. We trust the trimmer of the husbandman. And we freely give you, we present the branches of our tree to be cut by you to be pruned by you. Just do with our tree what you please. In some seasons we might not be producing fruit because it's fall or because it's winter. The Bible says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's even a time to be pruned. There's a time to rest and there's a time for our tree to go through a winter. And when the accuser comes and says, you're not producing fruit, Jesus, we allow you to be our defender. You are our defender. You are the husbandman. You are the carer for my tree. And then one day when we meet face to face, and then one day when I'm in you, my tree will produce fruit in every season. Just like the scripture says. It'll produce fruit in every season. If there's no more winter, God, and your this leaf will not wither. When there's no more sun, no more moon. When there's no more sun, because the Son of Man is the Son, Jesus. Of the Lord. We're the 
I'm a righteous tree, who am I to question you? Yeah, yeah, Sarah, that's good. We agree, Jesus. It's humility to agree with you, Jesus. So we humble ourselves before the Word of God. We humble ourselves like clay in the hands of the potter.
love you. I love you, Mandy. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Mandy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Let it go in. I love you, Mandy. I love you, Mandy. I love you. I love who you are, Mandy, who God has made you to be. The mantle he's given you, you're so faithful with it. You're faithful with little. Oh, you're faithful with little. You're faithful with little. God, Jesus. You're faithful with little in God's kingdom. Oh, even if you've given one piece of bread, you share bread with the whole house. God will multiply it and give you more bread because you're faithful with little. You're raising your children in the knowledge of the Lord. You're submitting to your husband in fear and reverence of God. And even if you have little, you give. Even when you're tired and you feel like you have nothing to give, you lean on the Father and He touches you and you give. You pour out everything He's given you faithful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you are a faithful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you follow him so closely, you follow him so closely that the kick up of dust, the kick up of the dust from his feet is on the bottom of your robe. Follow him so closely, and you are faithful with what he's given you. Keep pressing in, my daughter. The suffering, your suffering is almost through in this season. And just as um, the guy who married Rachel and Leah, I need his name, Jacob, right? This is Jacob married, um, he wanted Rachel, but he married Leah first because of that, you know, whatever, that thing. Yeah, the dad. But, and he may have been thinking that it was unfruitful, but Judah is one of Leah's sons. And we know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is from that tribe. So even if you feel like there's unfruitfulness in this time of suffering and this time of scraping by in this time of difficulty, God is planting seeds that will produce the offspring of the tribe of Judah. In your life, in your children, in your husband, in your families, in the hearts of the worshipers who come to hear you sing, Mandy, 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 you're faithful with little. You're faithful with little. Man, we love each other in this house. <laughs> each other in this house. Yeah, we do. I love all of you. I love you guys. That's like, I love you guys. I love you so much. I have such a deep well of the Father's heart for Jekka and Amanda and Sean and Larissa and Asia and Chantel and everybody else. I love you guys. We mean it in this house. We love you guys. They'll know we're sons. They'll know we're sons and daughters by the love we have for one another. I just wrote that down before worship said. Thank you. They will know you are my disciples by this. 
by this, what just happened on the stairs. They will know you're my dis disciples by that. I hope my love for you guys is weird. <laughs> I hope you're weirded out a little bit sometimes when I love you. Let's get weird. <laughs> I love you guys so much, I hope it's weird. I just want to pour my affection out. It's weird when God loves me sometimes. It's Stop like when he wakes kiss. me up in the middle of the night and he's like, hey, bro. <laughs> God, I'm trying to sleep. He's like, I love you. I'm like, all right. I'm going back to bed. He's like, okay. <laughs> it's weird. It doesn't make sense. He's so cool and weird. God, he loves us and I get to love you guys. I have such a deep well of love and I don't always express it so like perfectly and sometimes like me and Jekka argue or we're like mad at each other, but I love her. Um, okay. <laughs> I love you too. You are my number one ride or die homie. Homies for life, bro. Remember when you were in the hospital and you broke your leg? Dude, you I were like, God, this is, okay. She helped me <laughs> in a very holy way take a shower. <laughs> like she loves me. <laughs> like she's my homie. She loves me so much. Yeah, this is how they will know. She was You're wearing shorts, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was, I said holy. <laughs> but yeah. Dude, she's actually been there for a lot of my stupid stuff. Yeah. yeah, like that tonsillar abscess that I have where it ruptured and I was like spitting up blood and you're like at the hospital. And <laughs> you were taking pictures of me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was prescribed, guys, but she loves me. I love you, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she came to the hospital and was like, yeah. And then helped me shower and brought me meds and fed me. Yeah. This is true love. This is a house of love. And like a weird affection. Weird. <laughs> like hugging my roommate who's only got a towel on and like praying for him for 15 minutes after he got out of his shower. Weird. Because it's love. I can promise you Jesus is there when you're in the shower, so it's not going to be weird for me to do it. <laughs> like, I, it's love to stop in that moment, in those weird moments, and to just pour out affection and to love people. That's exactly what Jesus did. I was reading this morning, and this is a little bit more of the gospel, but I was reading this morning in John 3.16, and it was saying, this is how God loved the world. He sent his son. And then it goes to say, um, let me make sure I get this right. It says, those who believe the truth will receive light. And then it, and the footnote says, those who practice the truth will receive light. And the only thing in the Bible that calls itself the truth is Jesus. And so Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So what do I do? I practice Jesus. And Sean asked me what that meant this morning. He, and he was like, what do you think that means? Like, what does that mean to you? It means practicing lots of things, like loving people. Like this is the greatest commandment, love. Like love thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. And then the second, love thy neighbor as thyself. It's so simple. Paul says, I have come to know nothing but Christ crucified. And so I want to invite everybody into the simplicity of the gospel right now. Like the, the two plus two equals four gospel. Not the God picks and chooses gospel, the two plus two equals four gospel. And it's to always find yourself in a position where things might be confusing and upsetting and you don't know if your theology is right and you don't know your doctrine's right, but God said, love thy neighbor as thyself, not love thy doctrine as thyself or love thy theology as thyself. It says, love thy neighbor as thyself. And Paul says, I have come to know nothing but Christ crucified. So if you can go back to the man with holes in his hands, and loving your neighbor and loving God, even if you're not doing it perfectly, even if your theology is garbage and you're not winning arguments on Facebook <laughs> with your doctrine, <laughs> even if those things are not happening for you, you can love people. And this is a house that loves people. This is a group of people that loves people. 
And so let's just go back to the childlikeness of the gospel. Right, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> let's love people so much that it becomes weird to, right, yeah, and it makes a difference in their lives. Like, look at that, look at that hug. Look at the healing that's coming out of that hug. Look at the healing that's coming out of that. That's a papa's hug. <laughs> that's a good dad's hug. And I promise you, if you're gentle and loving to someone, you are not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong if I were to get up and just randomly hug one of you and tell you how much the Father loves you. I'm not doing any wrong in that. I don't know if I'm doing wrong by arguing theology on Facebook, but I, I won't. Can you read 1 Timothy 3? Yeah. 1 Timothy 3.17. Absolutely, Sean. All right, guys. 1 Timothy 3.17 out of the Passion Translation. All right. Let's go. You said 1 Timothy 3.17, Sean? Yeah, so I'll start at 16 because I can't find 17. For the mystery of righteousness is beyond all question. He was revealed as a human being and as our great high priest in the spirit. Angels gazed upon him as a man and the glorious message of his kingly rulership is being preached to the nations. Many have believed in him and he has been taken back to heaven and has ascended into the place of exalted glory in the heavenly realm. Yeah, great is this mystery of righteousness. That was nothing like what you said. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. It's James. It's James. Here, just read this. Okay. James three seventeen. Right. Well, let what I just said pierce your heart anyway. Yeah. You said seventeen. It's right there. Yeah. yeah. Right. But the wisdom from above is first pure, yes. then peaceable, yes. gentle, yes. open to reason, yes. full of mercy, good fruits, and partial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Yeah, that might mess with a lot of people who just argue people into the grave, but yeah, it's peaceable. We're peaceable people. And I, I don't care if I'm right or wrong about what the scripture says. For the most part, as long as I'm loving people, then the rest will sort itself out. The two greatest commandments, love thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. So, yeah. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I
want to look just like you, God. We want to walk and talk like you, Jesus. So lead me to the widow in the orphan. Oh, I want to look like you, Jesus. I want to love like you do. So lead me to the widow in the orphan. God, lead us to the widows and the orphans every day, God. There's widows and orphans, and this is pure and undefiled religion before the Father. Lead us in love to the widows and the orphans, God. Nick and Cindy we love you guys so so much thank you for being in our family I love you too Asia you're like one of my favorite people now I love you too Chase <laughs> you're amazing thank you for being raw and vulnerable tonight thank you for your desperate love for Jesus yeah that comes from him <laughs> it's so cool. I mean, but you release it. You yeah. have to say yes. So thank you for saying yes yeah. and releasing it. Yeah, you're welcome. Because it brings freedom in the room and yeah. it brought freedom to me. So Amen. thank you. I found freedom yesterday when we drove by that business and uh, the name of it was The Good Feet Store. And I still don't know what that means, but <laughs> it's a business in Denver. And we laughed about that for a little bit, but she's cool. I love Asia so, so much. Yeah. You got something, Kramer? You know, uh, when I minister to people on the streets, I, I explain John 3.16 as agapa love. So the Lord explained to me agapa love. So when I'm ministering, I step in front of my brother or sister, and I say, you know, he died for me. I want to die for you. Because that's what real love is. That means you lay down your life. You lay down your heart for another. Because that's real love. That's what God did. He gave his son, because when he died, part of him at that same time, he felt that. So when we stand in the gap for each other, and I've seen that love with David Nichols, I've seen that love with Sean, that's real love. To lay your life down for another, to stand in the gap for them and do life with them, to take that bullet, take that knife, whatever it stands, whatever it takes to do it, that's real love.
than we know, more than we understand. You love the widows and the orphan, every single one. You love the widow and the orphan, every single one. You Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your eyes to see, to see the people that are in front of us every day. Help us not to pass by and be too busy to really see wow. God. Thank you for imparting a fresh baptism of love tonight in our hearts. It's not just lip service. We cannot do it without you. God, we need your love to flow through us to other people and we need to see them through your eyes because we have so many judgments, God, in the way that we see things, in the way we approach people. We're taught to approach in judgment first, but you always approach with love first, Jesus. You love first. Yes. So thank you, God, for an impartation tonight of your heart for people. God, I just pray for a fresh baptism of love in my heart and in the heart of every person here, God. We need it, Lord. We can't be your hands and feet. We can't do ministry. We can't live daily life the way that we're supposed to without your love, God. We can't do anything of value. So I just thank you, Father, for imparting that love into us tonight in a supernatural way that you would just birth, that you would birth your love in our hearts, God, that it would be real, that when we reach out and talk to a child or a homeless person or a lost family member or whoever it is, God, when we're talking to them, I pray that we would see your eyes, Jesus, looking back at us because the scripture is true. Your word is truth, God. When we minister to the least of these, whatever we do for them, we are doing it to you. We are literally doing it to you. So I just pray for revelation tonight to pour out into our hearts and minds, God, that the next time we stop for the one, for that child or that man on the street or that woman overwhelmed with five kids who needs a hand, who needs to be touched by you, God, I pray that we would move in obedience, but that we would feel your heart and we would see you looking back at us and know that we are literally loving you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. What I, what I get with that, uh, Jesus telling us that true religion is loving the widows and, or, and the orphans, what I've noticed in my, in my 52 years of life is that there's a lot of parts of me that are an orphan and like a widow. There's lots of inside parts and until those parts get healed, anything that someone taught me to hate about myself or hate in myself, until it's healed, I'm, I'm letting that out on people that remind me of that brokenness. I'm letting out that ugliness on them. I'm letting out that discord that isn't healed in here by Jesus. And so it's very important that we ask God what parts of me are orphaned 
what parts of me did my, did my dad tell me, nice try, son, not good enough, or, or a teacher, you know, you're a C student, or, you know, you're not going to make it, your dreams don't matter, or, you, you know, whatever it is, whatever those rejections are where we taught ourselves, I'm rejected, and we said just accept it and maybe hide that part because people are going to reject that part. This is why it's, it's sometimes hard to love people. This is why sometimes we look at someone and go, why are they so annoying to me? Mm -hmm. It's because you have something in yourself that you've been trying to hide that they remind you of. Yeah. And um, Jesus wants us, he says, that's true religion, loving the widows and the orphans. Yes. He wants all of this healed and he wants this healed so that when you see someone, you just see who they are. You look and you see exact, wow, God, look at Gerald. What a man after your heart. Gerald Kramer, you know, like you see. And Gerald's like, I got some problems. And Sean's like, I got some problems. But when I look at Gerald, like God gives us the eyes. And I just want to fight for that. That if there's an orphan in there, I'm just like, I love that orphan. And, it, and if, it's a, if it's a widow, where a widow is someone that what they loved died. They lost who they loved. They lost their protection. They lost their covering. And there's a lot of them in the world. And the world teaches you, especially in other cultures, says if a woman loses her covering, she's to go out and, and be like, she's, she's done. She's thrown away. And, and Jesus says, no. Love the widow, love the orphan, include them, hug them, help them, see them, encourage them, help to, help to daughter and son them, you know, help to help them. And you guys, I just promise you the things that we see that we don't like, they're just the lies from the enemy that have, yeah. that have clobbered that person in front of you. Those annoyances were like, oh, I want to, I want to avoid that person. That that's not that person. It's like the pain that the enemy is causing inside the person. And there's maybe some loops and some cycles, some demonic stuff going on. But that's not who the person is. Let's remember that. So you guys, ask Jesus to show you the orphan parts of yourself, and love, love that. Let him love it decide to, to like have that conversation in yourself, forgive the part of yourself that someone said was unworthy or ugly. If you're disgusted with parts of yourself, maybe have that conversation. Say, Jesus, help me forgive, help me. And then, and then tell that part of, I love you. I don't, I'm not disgusted with you. Yeah. I forgive you for those things. <laughs> I let go of these accusations inside myself. Because if we're, you know, that greatest commandment, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as your, as yourself. We are limited by the brokenness inside ourself. It makes it hard to love our neighbors. So there's three, there's three things there and God is, humans are pretty good at, we're good at one thing instead of another. And Jesus is calling us to this trifecta of loving God, loving the Father and learning to receive his love, loving your neighbor and being whole in ourselves and being honest. The problem with wholeness in here is it takes an honest conversation and sometimes you need other people for that honest conversation. Like, you know what? I'm realizing I'm disgusted with something in myself and I keep accusing it. So I just bless you guys. Also, one thing that I always noticed is I grew up thinking that if someone, you know, you did this wrong, Sean, I actually believed if I looked at it like I did that wrong, that would help me fix it. But when we, when we receive that accusation in ourself, we can, we can change. But what I've noticed is it's not about hating that part of ourself that will help us change. Have you ever noticed when someone, you have to keep nagging at them and they never change, but your, your spirit towards them is negative? over and over and over. The only way that change is allowed is you love them and you say, I see you have a struggle. Let's talk about that struggle. Let's talk about the struggle. I love you even though you have that struggle. You want to tell me how that feels? I know I and everyone else have been telling you you need to change. But let's talk about what you're experiencing. 
and, and let's talk about it without me accusing you and going, trying to find what's wrong with you that's causing that, but actually loving you through the whole experience. Yeah, amen. So, so Father, just help us with these things. Father, you, you, want us, you want us to actually like be whole. Your kingdom has to do with like a wholeness, a shalom, and the selah and the peace. It has to do with not figuring out who's good and who's evil, but like loving. Jesus came and he was always in this calm disposition except for the people that were judging. He, 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 he rebuked the judges of others. Yeah. He rebuked the Pharisees, but he loved, just like Chase does, he loved the sinner. And, and the sinner is not the sinner. That sinner is just what's being, that's just the symptom of the brokenness. It's the lies. So he loved that person. He loved that human being, no matter what their like, what their symptoms, what they're radiating because of pain. So Father, help us to love people and not try to find what's wrong with them so that we can eliminate them from our lives. Father, help us not live in these cycles of two or three year friendships until we get sick of a person. Right? Yeah, so like help us actually once we're going, oh, this person has some actual issues. And then we want to define them. They're a narcissist or they're, you know, they're just a selfish person or they're, they're a liar or whatever. We want to define it. But as soon as we define it, we've lost Christ. Yeah. As soon as we say that is your problem, we've lost what Jesus asks us to do. Jesus says, love them. Find out what is tough for them. Yeah. Don't, if you're getting sick of them, it's just you're getting sick of something that's hurting them, so help them. And let's talk about it and let's find out. And let's, at, like with my wife, we do these kind, kind questions or kind and caring questions when something really rough comes up. So Father, help, help us to ask our dearest ones, the ones we're getting annoyed at or we just wish they'd change, help us to ask them caring questions because I believe that's what Jesus would ask. Sometimes we ask someone for a drink of water. Like, why would Jesus go and ask that lady for a drink of water? He's like, you are worthy to give me water. You are worth, which doesn't make any logical sense. He's talking to someone that knows in culture that she's unworthy to give him water. And he says, I love you. You are worthy to give me water. Yeah. Yeah, and then he goes, I, you are worthy for me to wash your feet. That makes no sense. The son of God says, unless I wash your feet, you won't be able to have any of me. He says, you guys, you're worthy, not because of your demonic loops and problems, but you are worthy because I, like, I love you. I see who you are. I see purity in you. I see who God designed you to be, and I'm fighting for it. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. I am fighting for you because I love you. You are not who you think you are. Wow. You are not who your five husbands treated you as, made you to be. I see you. I love you. Wow. I'd love some water. You're pure. Give me some water. Isn't that weird? He said, give me some water before he saved her. Yeah. Before she was yeah. pure. To him, she was pure, which is crazy because he's purity itself. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You got something to share, Sharon? Yes, you do. Did you have something to say? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say there's so many instances of Jesus loving people before the blood of the cross. There's like, there's just so much in scripture where Jesus loved or met somebody where they were at before the blood of the cross. Um, and somehow religion has said that it took the blood to make us lovable. Like before that, we were just pieces of crap that God had to, like, God didn't want to look at us, but he, he sort of did, so he had to send his son so that he could then look at us. If God couldn't, yeah, is Jesus, Jesus was looking at all those people. Jesus was looking directly at all of those people and loving them so perfectly before his blood was spilled for them. Like the woman who said, let his blood be on me and my child, Jesus loved her before the blood was actually on her and her child. 
It's just beautiful. Like uh, he loved the world, so he sent his son. Not he sent the son and then loved the world. Like we talk about sin so much of the time. Like Jesus died for your sins, but how many of you have been told Jesus died for your value? How many times has someone spoken over you, Chase? Jesus died because you're valuable to him. Whoa. Yeah, Jesus died to get the sin out of the way. That was just a byproduct of you being valuable. Or that was just before you, you were valuable, so Jesus had to get the sin out of the way. Not Jesus got the sin out of the way and now you're valuable. He, you, don't, you don't die for somebody's like future value. You're like, wow, man, he's valuable right now. I gotta, gotta spill my blood. I love you. Gotta spill my blood. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What do you got, Sharon? So I just got a poem that I wrote. It's called uh, Emotions. Why am I being so naive, letting these emotions get the best of me, leading me to a place I know I don't want to be? When will I learn there's nothing there for me? If I can't bring the light, without the temptations taking over me, then I have no business even bringing myself to that place. Can I let Jesus be my everything? Life is filled with ups and downs, but Jesus is there to fill this empty heart. If it isn't his way, then nothing good can come. Because when I go my own way, only death can truly take over me. But his way is life. When will I learn these emotions shouldn't lead me. Instead, it's time to let Jesus heal me. I gotta test, or I gotta trust him with the process because it is his will that deep down I want. I've already searched the world. There's nothing that it can offer me. It's the love of Christ that I yearn for. His love is like no other. It can't be found in man. It's the only thing that is real. Everything else is fake. It will all be burned away. Yet, yet God's love will last. Nothing can ever take that away. It's the love of Christ that changes everything. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing. Sharon. <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus Can make me whole again Nothing but the blood of Jesus Nothing but the blood of Jesus 